Good evening and welcome to KSC TV News. I'm Benajal Rai. Arm City Compost Initiative was established with an idea to give people a sustainable solution for their waste. All this food waste that would have normally gone in the trash, instead we can take with us and compost. Our mission really is to divert as much food waste as possible from landfills in the area. Um, but in doing so, we really are providing a much bigger, broader service. We're taking something that has been become trash for a lot of people and we're turning it back into a resource. This initiative is also a way to reduce a carbon footprint and fight climate change. If food waste was a country, it would be the third largest producer of greenhouse gases. Um, food waste probably contributes, you know, from what I know, about 20% of those emissions, of the total emissions that go to cause climate change as we know it. Um, and a lot of that is through methane gas. Their customers get a five gallon bucket to collect their food waste. A pickup service gathers those buckets twice a week. And they'll accept um, like egg cartons and compostable coffee cups and you know meat and dairy and things that you don't typically you don't typically want to put in backyard compost you know compostable utensils which is becoming more and more common you know take out um, containers things like that so that's really a, a great way to sort of add to that compost you know piece um, that normally that thing those things would just end up in the trash so this is five gallon bucket and when it gets full, it is delivered to the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District by Arm City Compost. When the snow melts and it is planting season again, customers will have their compost delivered back to them as eco-friendly fertilizer. Benzel Rai, KSC TV. This is probably the first introduction most people have had to Jenny Powers. It's the mural painted last summer by the Waldogs group. It is one of the several murals noting important people and things from Keene's past. Thanks to this mural, Power's importance is getting re-examined. She hadn't been heard of before, which is really fascinating. So all of a sudden we have this woman out there um, whose story is really interesting and people just wanted to learn more. Powers was a deputy sheriff for Cheshire County during the progressive era of the early 1900s. She was one of the second women in New Hampshire to serve that rule. She was one of the first people to make the animal welfare a priority and to advocate for animal cruelty laws. Jenny Powers was walking these streets, chasing down vehicles, and uh, if anyone was abusing an animal, she would. She once jumped out a window to chase a man who was uh, abusing a horse and took the screen and everything with her. Um, she was that kind of person. That's the kind of person the Historical Society wants people today to know more about. This is Trissa Hurley. She's developing a curriculum about powers so teachers can take her story into the classroom. I think that any time that children can learn about something first through understanding what's happening right here in their town or has happened right here in their town, that it brings history alive for them in a way that is very meaningful. To know like we walk the same streets of these people who are doing these amazing things is, is nice. And to have kids see that mural and remember that I know who that is and I know how important she was to this community, um, I think says a lot. Uh, I feel like we have a responsibility to share those stories and make those connections with kids. Carol hopes the Historical Society's work will make these murals come to life for the current generation. Benajil Rai, KSC TV. This is a KSC TV News update and I am Benajil Rai. More than 2 million people around the world are now infected with the COVID-19 virus. The Sentinel reports nearly a third of the total number of cases have been reported here in the U.S. More than 28,000 people in the country have died in recent weeks during the pandemic. On Wednesday alone, more than 2,400 died. It is the highest single-day death toll caused by the virus so far. In New Hampshire, 1,139 residents have been diagnosed with COVID-19. A Peterborough company is making masks for healthcare facilities statewide. 
The Sentinel reports, So Clean Incorporated is providing personal protective equipment to more than 40 healthcare facilities, including eight in Cheshire County. So Clean spokeswoman Dia Kolakona says the company has delivered about 1,050,000 masks statewide as of Wednesday. Kolakona says the initiative should hit its goal of providing 2,050,000 of masks by the weekend. New Hampshire hopes to increase unemployment benefits by $600 weekly starting next week. The Sentinel reports the CARES Act was signed on March 27, which includes $2.2 trillion in federal stimulus funds for state to boost unemployment checks as well as expanded eligibility for benefits. However, in New Hampshire, many people have not received the benefits yet. Deputy Commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Employment Security, Richard Levers, says federals and state agencies had to complete certain steps before the implementation of the CARES Act. This has been the KCTV News Updates, and I'm Penichal Rai. Kane State had six exchange students for the 2020 spring semester from its various partner universities and exchange programs. And the college has some international students who came here for their four years of college degree. But the outbreak of COVID-19 has left these students in despair. Some of them could return their home on time, but for some, it was not an option. We are all worried about the situation, but when you're away from home, you are worried about your own, your own safety, your own health, but also about what your family is going through. Keene State is providing these students with housing and food. The Global Education Office is working closely with these students for their support. People are working very hard and communally together to support all students. And there's been a special interest on campus to support international students. And so I do some, but it's really working with many different people throughout campus who, who really try to support international students and also students who, from, who are domestic, who don't have a home to go to or a safe home. Um, and so I'm happy to say Keene State has done quite a bit to support these students. Construction crews will be working on crosswalks in downtown Keene this week. The Keene Sentinel reports they will be replacing the old concrete pavers with asphalt. The work will be done between 3 in the morning and 10 to minimize disruption. There is no word on how long the project will take. The first Clarence Tamar Marathon is in the books. 250 people ran half marathon starting from Surrey at 7 in the morning and 350 people ran the full marathon from Gilsom starting at 8 a.m. Both ended at Keene State College. Deep Root Massage gave free massages to the finishers and Keene State Dining Commons provided free food in the fish squad. Runners say it was a perfect day for a run. It was really good. I think the folks on the course were very helpful, lots of community support. I mean, it was a really, really, I mean, it was a perfect running day for anyone. This is an annual event that will happen again in the last Sunday of September. That's all for the edition of KSC TV. Thanks for tuning in.